Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. I've decided that we will continue operations around Duna and so I'm going to expand my station there and give it all the modules that uh, colonization has for orbital stations. So uh, I'm not opening the fairings because for some reason that creates a little ram spike. Uh, so we're just got peek in here. There's a skipper down there. It is the transfer stage. This is a fuel tank and some maneuvering engines for the station itself to get it docked to the rest of Duna Station. There's an uh, agricultural module, uh, aeroponics module, some fuel, a docking hub with plenty of RCS, and a uh, science module, uh, that's a bio lab, and then a colony uh, command center. We already have a Kerbitat over there, the large docking ports, and then uh, finally one of these little guys. Now, in the cupola, I've put a uh, dude ball Kerman, and that's because we don't really have a controller on the station, uh, and a probe core. We do have a probe core on the transfer stage down here, and that's so we don't control from something that's going to be wobbling during launch. It is quite a wobbly sort of payload. It's really, 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 really tall compared to the rocket. Uh, so that's bad. Uh, obviously. And uh, we are risking dude ball here. Also, quite a lot of funds, 365,000, of which about 60,000 will recover with the boosters. But So 300,000 still. Pretty risky considering our financial situation. The center of mass is over here. I figure that's probably of interest. But obviously it'll uh, gradually go higher as we drop the boosters and lose fuel in this stage. So this is, a, yeah, this is a Strider, regular Strider launcher. Capacity 100 tons to low Kerman orbit. Well, what else can I say? Uh, let's give it a go. Dubal needs the experience. Okay, here we are. And we are at the correct timing for a Duna transfer. So I have time to work through to that. So SAS on, throttle is up. I guess I'll actually ignite everything at once rather than uh, stage the uh, mainsails first. All right, here we go. Okay, we have cleared the launch clamps and smart ASS is active. Got uh, control. I forgot to uh, change control to that one controller. I'm gonna say there. Control from here. That should save us some wiggling. Okay, throttling down the main cells a bit so they don't overheat. Obviously, we're not gonna release the fairings there. We're gonna wait well after. Yeah, well, we might be releasing the there. It depends on how far the mainsails carry us. We are now going transonic. Alright, no apparent problems. SRB set. Alright, the SRBs are off. Hopefully the mainsails can get us to an acceptable apoapsis at least. And then we can use a transfer stage to circular circularize everything. So on his own, Dubal Kerman has 2,000 days worth of food, water, and oxygen. So, quite a lot. Obviously those supplies are to help out the people already at Duna as well. Not carrying too much by way of spare fuel though. Probably should have carried more of that, but obviously we're already quite quite full with bits and pieces here. Okay, just cruising right along here. Making for a tight orbit in this case. Okay, just a little bit left in this stage, but pretty close. Pretty close. Okay, 
It'll probably be exactly right to deorbit this stage. Yeah, so that stage is gonna go back down. We've got plenty of time to apoapsis for the next stage to finish it off. Let's separate off the fairings now. And those will deorbit as well. Okay, very good. Now, okay, well, I'll, I'll sep and do the skipper separately. So, separation. Press space bar and nothing happens. Separation. Okay, skipper. Okay, proceeding to apoapsis now. Okay, extending solar panels. I didn't action group those. We do have uh, always open solar panels on the side here. So there you go. That's what it looks like out out of the fairing. Pretty simple. Okay, dude ball is safely in orbit. Let's plot for Duna. Okay, so the best I can do is get to about 8,000 kilometers from Duna. And part of the reason for that is because we are very close to having a moon encounter here. And so if I do the burn at any other time, I'm going to end up with a moon encounter which will interfere with things. So yeah, we will go with this burn. And it's only 1,052, which is not too bad. And we should be able to take care of that in about uh, two and a half minutes or so. We've got two reaction wheels. We've got one down here and one at the top there. Alright, let's go. Coming close to the conclusion of the burn now with the moon menacingly in sight. Should be fairly close to accurate overall, but that moon there could get in the way. Let's see. Alright, doesn't look like the moon's in the way. And we don't have an encounter yet. Let's see. It seems indecisive, as sometimes happens. Alright, now we have firm encounter. 14,000. 8,000. Well, about 8,000, which is what I was expecting anyway. Alright, let me plot the mid-course plane change and then add that to... It's not in 170 days, is it? I don't think so. I think that's the next orbit around or something. Yeah, 25 days. And I'll add that to alarm clock. That might come before our Drez stuff. Yeah, it does. I'm totally ignoring that asteroid thing, by the way. So we'll follow this out and do its mid course plane change immediately. We would like it going the same direction as Duna Station 1, obviously. Oh, uh, it looks pretty good. That'll definitely do for now. Alright. Uh, accidental Ike encounter on the way out, but that's not going to interfere with us. Okay, here we go. Let's make sure everything is safe. Alright, approaching our mid-course correction. And we are very interested to see that this does what it's supposed to do. Okay, that looks good enough. We can make further adjustments once we get into Duna SOI. But that is an acceptable approach. Let's target Duna Station. Pretty good. Pretty much in line. Shouldn't be too hard to rendezvous and dock with it like that. Alright. So, two balls all set with, uh, really... This station extension is larger than the station itself, so this is the main body of the thing, actually. 
So let's add the SOI change alarm. And that's going to happen after the curb into Dres transfer. And then we also have a uh, little business to take care of with returning a probe from Jewel. I think it was the Paul probe or is it the Bop probe? Probably the, the Paul probe didn't survive, right? Yeah. So, all right, let's launch some Dres stuff then. So here's why I've cooked up for something to land on Dres to drill for water. And on the surface of Dres to convert it, and then it'll hook up using a pipe to something else that can transport it back to orbit. The problem with this is that it costs a lot and has to be launched in a Strider XL because of its mass. Uh, it alone is like 56.4 tons. And then we have to get it all the way over to Dres, which you know has, uh, you know, has a little bit of an inclination and other issues to get to it. No atmosphere to slow us down. And so now with the eight boosters that this has, we would recover about 100,000 credits if those are recovered. I, I don't know. Did we get it? Oh, we seem to. Okay, that's destroyed. Yeah, I think we recovered the boosters from the Duna Station extension launch. So that's good. But yeah, that's, that's not a lot though. The payload itself only costs 100,000. Hmm. It's all the launch here. Well, the transfer stage is 80,000 80, or so. But uh, the four main sails and then this huge tank apparently costs quite a lot. So that's a thing. But it does have the drills. It can drill for water, minerals. But it's the most expensive launch I've cooked up. Let me show you what else I've got. So this is unceremoniously called Dres Colony Deployment 1. And as you can see, it's sort of like a replica of what we were trying to do on the moon. And complete with its own little orange. As I said, uh, I thought about using oranges to do the trick for deploying modules to the surface of Dres. And so that's what this would be. This is the Colony Control Center. The question is, would it really do much good? I mean, or will it just uh, glitch out and blow up like the Moon Colony did? At least with the other module, even though it's so expensive to launch, uh, that will be drilling for fuel and all. And so it's got a clear purpose. This is basically just to house Kerbals and hope for the best. We've got the Colony Control Center. I've also got uh, two other modules ready to go. I guess maybe we should just do all the things. Uh, let me take a look at the contracts that we have. So this costs 375,000 and we'll recover about 60,000 of that because it is a Strider. So about 300,000. So that means the three launches that look like this will cost about, um, what you got, a million. And then on top of that about 500,000 for that uh, fuel, fuel version. So 1.5 million. We know we're gonna lose about two million on the on the asteroid contract, at least if I can't figure out a way to t tackle that in the meantime. So that leaves us pretty tight. So let me take a look at the contract screen to see what kind of contracts we could do to make up for that. We'll get on with these launches. I won't transfer them just yet, but we'll do these launches if I can figure out if I can look at the contract screen and figure out how I'm gonna get 1.5 million back. So taking a look at this, build new surface outposts on Minmus seems simple enough. We could get about, uh, let's call it 300,000 just for buffer from that. We've got five years to do that. Let's let's pick up that contract. Unless there's a catch. Uh, there might have been a catch that I didn't pay attention to. Hold on. Uh, power antenna docking port, five Kerbals, research lab. Oh, that should be pretty easy for Minmus. New orbital station around Kerbin. We could do that pretty easily and then attach it to our existing station. Needs a research lab. 12 Kerbals. Well, that's only 100,000, but every little bit counts. Two years. Okay. Perform temperature scans of Gilly at specific locations. It's a little bit tedious. Let's hold off on picking that one up. Plant flag on Paul might be difficult since we can't really, really get, put a newly discovered, well it has to be newly discovered. 
Um, yeah, we already have a class D. And getting that class D over to Duna would be doable, I guess. Well, no, it's, uh, it doesn't have any fuel anymore. It would have been doable, maybe. But uh, we did not... We did not get this contract in time. This would have been a great contract to do earlier with that particular asteroid, instead of ejecting it into here. Um, I, I'm going for the sake of my own math. I'm going to I'm going to decline this, cancel this contract. Maybe I don't know. We have still got eight, uh, six years on it. Maybe it's a little bit premature. Yeah. But I really would like to clear the air for what we're about to do. Surface outposts on Moho's right out. Nope. N Ilu and Moho are a little bit far out for... We're already overextended as it is. Maybe temperature scans of Gilly isn't too hard. I mean, hop hopping around Gilly... Well, it takes a lot of time is the thing, right? Because you can't time warp. And the orbital velocity is really, really low. Yeah, I'm going to hold off on that. So these are things we have right now. I guess we can do the launches. I, I feel comfortable that we can at least get some contracts that we can do to make up the money. Okay, so here we go. We are launching the Colony Control Center this time. And we're controlling with the Orange's probe core, so we're not sending a Kerbal with it. Probably safer that way. So throttle up, SAS on. And it looks like a decent uh, launch, not too not too tall or anything like that. And, but judging from the previous launch, uh, we can get pretty tall without it wobbling around. Though I don't have a controller on the base like I did with that one to make it a little bit more stable. And, of course, controlling from something on top tends to make it wobble a bit more. Alright, so uh, ju this is just a normal strider, and we'll see how it does. Here we go. So the thing about doing launches, of course, is that I have to restart the game pretty frequently. So we'll do this launch and then another launch and then we'll probably do two more launches in the next episode and then I'm gonna have to do the transfers and then take care of whatever contracts we need to do in order to recoup our funds. So that's the order of operations I'm looking at right now. Alright, everything's looking good. No instability detected. Looks like some combination of Kerbal Joint Reinforcement and Struts has worked once again. Alright, getting ready to stage the SRBs. Okay, they're out and off. Okay. So I guess the goal is to rebuild what we had on the moon, but put it on Drez instead, I guess. Maybe that's a good way to go. It should make up for the loss of our moon base if uh, we extend it to another planet where we know there is water. Maybe there's carbonite on Duna, so we can do some carbonite stuff over there. Though compared to water, carbonite's not quite as uh, beneficial, I think. Or maybe water just seems better because, you know, we can use it for life support and potentially convert it to oxygen and all that sort of thing. Maybe I'm making a mistake about that and carbonite is better. We need to get on with carborundum too. I wonder if I, we should send a carborundum scanner of some sort over to Drez during this sequence. I need to remember that. So that'll be part of launches next time, if I remember. <laughs> so much going on. 
let's just remind ourselves, I mean, we've got so many Kerbals deployed in all sorts of locations. We've got probes around everything in the Jewel system. Yeah, it's complicated. So I've been working on uh, adjusting the new colonization modules, you know, in 1.0.5 uh, to work with realism overhaul. And I'm gonna begin testing that out during live streams. So I'll try and build a, you know, um, a Rover Dude USI colonization station in orbit around Earth, which should be interesting. I'm a little bit too shallow here. Basically, it entailed sizing the stuff up and adjusting the liquid fuel and oxidizer to be real fuels and also the mod propellant and unfortunately you have to get rid of the reaction wheels I don't know if Rover Dude ever intended these modules to work without reaction wheels but I'll have to figure it out somehow otherwise the things don't get touched I think it's just resizing the modules to fit the form factor of realism overhaul which basically goes uh, instead of 1.25 meter you go to 2 meter instead of 2.5 meter you're at 4 meter and so forth so everything's scaled up by 1.6 or so I decided to uh, instead of just having random fuels make the liquid fuel into liquid methane and the oxidizer into liquid oxygen colonization already has liquid hydrogen so that was given and the mod propellant I just set at uh, MMH and N204 so I split it up into two propellants actually could have gone with just hydrazine but for what we're going to be doing uh, probably MMH and N204 would be a lot easier okay we're, we're probably going to have the, about the same situation as we did last time a nice tight apoapsis and a suborbital periapsis to get rid of this stage. So, crawl down, set. And once again, we have a skipper here. And I'm going to separate the fairings. Make sure that it is the fairings, and off they go. So, there it is. Uh, this stage. We'll get us on our way. This stage does the mid-course correction and that sort of thing. I remembered the decoupler here. Very good. And then we have another decoupler here and then the base of the colony control center with those little tubes. A series of tubes. And then the orange, obviously, with its controller. The orange has the RTGs, so not much by way of solar panels on here. I did sneak a life support tank in here, but the colony is going to need some additional life support module. Or it needs to be able to create its own life support, but we're going to have to hook that up properly. And until we do hook it up properly, we're not going to have any denizens there. Oh, and look, I did remember to pack the machinery, by the way. Just in case you were worried about that. Okay, 102 by 78. And we are safely in orbit. So, getting ready to proceed with this mission. But first, let's launch the next one. And we'll probably do the transfers together. I don't know if that's a good idea because then they might be close together on the dread side which might make juggling them a little bit harder but that's the plan anyway so yep I'm gonna have to restart the game and launch the next one alright here we are with a pretty much identical launch but this time with the Kerbatat inside and uh, sorry about having so many identical launches but we have a very solid launcher system and uh, our modules are basically the same so yeah uh, it shows that there's only 350 machinery even though we have space for 700 because the Kerbatat itself has a 350 we didn't store the machinery in the base the module base anymore I have to point out that uh, just I restarted the game completely just loaded up the craft in the VAB and then brought it out to launch pad and we we're already at 3.4 gigabytes of RAM 
So I'm gonna need to figure out how to deal with that. Um, I'll talk more about that after we launch. Let's go. So yeah, the problem is in this version of KSP, the textures weren't all DDS files, and with the DDS files you can scale them down pretty easily. Um, I don't know how much good it does, but you can scale them down. And the problem here is that uh, the textures in general are not DDS files and cannot be scaled down, so the only thing I can do is trim parts. Or perhaps I should get rid of some of my previous debris might be a thing. I think I might want to just nix the Explorer X instead of trying to do something fancy with it just to make sure that it's not uh, causing ra uh, you know additional loading issues because it's just sitting there in the persistent file and it's pretty darn big in the persistent file too. I mean we've got uh, 70 flights underway this will be 71 so that's quite a lot. Might want to cut back on some of the obsolete modules in order to make way for other things. I am running in OpenGL mode by the way. So that that's 3.4 uh, gigabytes of RAM OpenGL mode. <laughs> uh, not very helpful is it? That's because Active Texture Management has already compressed all the textures in theory. Maybe there are some textures that are being exempted from Active Texture Management and I should go in and check that. Unexempt them, make sure they're getting compressed properly as well. Okay, SRB set. Well, I was just thinking that uh, given the pinch I'm in, maybe it is finally time to abandon the clouds. The clouds do take up a lot of RAM. And if we really want to keep this up and do more, maybe that's what I need to do. Alright, all systems are nominal. We're continuing to coast up. Basically the same trajectory as the previous flights. No particular change seems necessary. Okay, here we go for the last bit again. A little bit higher on the apoapsis. 100 kilometers, very good. All right, throw down stage separation. A little burn to push us away, and fairing separation. Okay, there it is. Looks exactly the same as the other one, except this is now a curbitat. All very good. Nice to have things to be modular and, you know, easily replicated without any problems. Means that uh, you can have some certainty when you put your funds into the rocket. And of course, uh, well, few systems can work more consistently than this one. We know the Strider series is solid. And it looks like uh, this combination of the orange transfer stage, well, this is also part of a transfer stage, really. And then the payload in the center seems to work pretty well. All right, and that's orbit, a pretty nice circular orbit. Not perfectly circular, but close enough, darn it. So, uh, yeah, sorry about having three very similar launches, but we are now well on our way to colonizing the surface of Drez and also building a larger Duna station. Now, how these pieces are going to really come together, well, that's what the future of the series will be about, I suppose. Alright, so I've got some work to do with this uh, series and making sure that it remains as stable as possible. So I'll get to work on that, and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.